welcome to the book bunch today we are going to be going through the first half of the books that i read this month so there are nine books here and then i read eight others so i read 17 books in total this month it was quite a good month of reading i had some really good books and some not so great books that we'll get into later but i hope that you enjoy this video my name is Sam and if you're new to the channel, I'd like to say a very special welcome and if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for joining this community again. I hope that you enjoy this video. So the first book that I'm going to talk to you today about is The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. This book was not what I expected it to be. It's actually only like 30 pages of the Benjamin Button story because turns out it's a super short story and then the rest of this book is random other little tales that F. Scott Fitzgerald wrote. So I did quite enjoy um, The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. It wasn't at all what I had thought. I haven't seen the movie or anything but I've heard quite a lot about the movie so I thought it was going to be a bit happier than it was. Turns out it's really not a happy story um, and it is yeah quite short like I said. It was pretty good. I'd probably give it a 3.5 overall. Um, I also didn't mind the other short stories that were in the book. They weren't anything amazing. They were just little tales of like very short snippets of people's lives or little adventures that people had. Um, yeah, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but it definitely wasn't a bad classic to read. And it was such a quick read that I feel like if you wanted to smash out in, the, in an afternoon, just so you knew what was going on, you definitely could. Also read this month, Philip K. Dick's Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep. This is the book that created basically the Blade Runner movies. I haven't seen the movies. I have heard good things. I did... When I was reading this, I didn't actually realise that it was the same kind of thing um, until I looked it up and then I was like, oh, this is meant to be the Blade Runner <laughs> book. Um, but it was really good. I'd probably give it a four out of five stars. It wasn't what I expected, but it was very good. It's very dark. Very dark. Um there's basically this guy whose job it is to go around and kill androids it's set very far in the future and basically people that are left on the people that are left on earth are trying to keep their humanity and keep their sanity and keep life alive so they're like it, you basically try to collect animals and keep them alive as like your status in the world to show how much money you earn and how good you are as a, as a person for these animals that you own um and then there and it goes as far as like some people have fake animals that are they look real and they seem to act mostly real but they're actually all um electronic um because the people like either can't afford anything better or want more than they can afford that's actually living so they kind of buy these um electronic ones instead and try and keep it a secret because if people find out then there's this huge shame around it and different things and this main guy that you follow he is a police officer whose job it is to hunt down androids and kill them um he himself does have an electric sheep you find it out pretty early on in the book. So his whole mission throughout this is to try to kill enough androids to get a big enough bounty that he can then afford a real animal. So he wants a real life um, creature that he can look after because he's sick of living this facade and all this kind of thing. Um, but it, it plays very heavy on psychology and kind of what happens when um, I guess your beliefs are messed with or your uh, morals are kind of played with and different things like that and what is right and what is wrong and 
where do you draw the line on what is alive and what is not alive and all of that kind of thing. I did enjoy it. Um, definitely a good sci-fi read. So yeah, probably about four out of five stars, I would say. I also read a non-fiction book. I read a couple actually this month. This one is The Spy Who Painted the Queen. I actually got this book for like $3 or $4 or something um, on a online bookshop that was having a really good sale. So I thought I'd pick it up. This is basically a non-fiction case study on this guy named Philip de Laszlo who in the war time was basically um, under surveillance and all of that kind of thing because it was suspected that he was committing treason by sending money and information across the border to his uh, home country, which is Hungary. So he was living in England at the time and he was an English citizen. But yeah, they basically thought that he was using his power and his influence because he was a very, very famous painter. Like it says in the title, he did actually paint the queen when she was younger. Um, to basically, yeah, send money and information through a, a Dutch, like, um, I can't remember the word. It's like a politician's bag thing that goes through the countries and, like, no one can open them except for the, like, people that it's addressed to. And it's, like, super secure mail, basically, that people in authority have um, and, like, embassies and stuff have them. So they were basically saying that he was abusing this power and actually helping the enemy, which at the time was Hungary and Germany and all of that. Um, it was pretty decent read. It was very long and very heavy. And basically the whole point of this is he was never actually found guilty because all of the evidence against him was either misplaced, disappeared, or wasn't substantial because it was kind of collected through not so legitimate ways. Because um, basically MI5 was heavily involved and all the evidence they collected was apparently not valid in court or something like that. And I don't, you're, you're basically, they present the case in the sense that you're meant to kind of Decide for yourself whether you believe he actually was a spy or not. I don't know that I believe that he was, but something was going on. So I don't know. I don't really know how I feel about it um, in the end. But yeah, it was definitely a really interesting read. I definitely would recommend it if you're into really historical biographies and spies and case studies and those kind of things um because it is very heavy on that if you like wartime related things this is definitely something you'd enjoy but yeah if that's not your cup of tea probably give it a miss because that's what it completely is about so yeah wasn't a bad read I'd probably give it a 3.5 out of 5 just because it's not entirely my cup of tea but I still enjoyed the read that I had also read Reformation Women. This book was amazing. Um, this is a book about, um, it's basically a collection of mini biographies on different women that lived in the 16th century who basically influenced um, the Reformation in some way. So whether that be they were just incredible housewives who are incredibly supportive of their husbands and they like fed ridiculous amounts of people and sheltered ridiculous amounts of people and all of that kind of thing and protected their family and all of that to like they legitimately like led armies and did all sorts of things to kind of protect their countries and their beliefs and everything because essentially around this time um the catholics were not happy with the this form of Christianity that was um, 
basically coming to the forefront of everybody's mind and the Catholics wanted to quash that pretty fast um, and so anyone that was not a Catholic they basically hunted down and killed or did really horrible things to which I think is horrible considering they were claiming to be people of God like they might not have had the same viewpoint as other people of God but I don't think that gave them any right to do what they did and I don't know how they thought that they did it's not biblical at all um but yeah so it was really horrible kind of time in like religion and everything but yeah so there were these basically this focuses on the strong women that were around in that time who defended their beliefs and defended their families and their towns and their cities and their countries against this really strong evil catholic movement essentially that was happening at the time by saying that i'm not saying catholics are evil or that anything like that but what they were doing at the time was not okay um and i do believe that it was evil because murdering people is evil um that is just my opinion um but yeah basically these people were trying to stop other people getting murdered for what they believed in um yeah i thought it was really good it was very eye-opening it really helped me in the sense that like it really shows that no matter where you are in your point in life or what your current circumstances is there's always something that you can be doing for god um even if it is just running a good household or being supportive of your husband or whatever like yeah it was it was really good i really enjoyed it i definitely recommend everybody to read this that has any kind of inkling in the christian faith or even the catholic faith because i feel like it kind of shows how far Catholics have come as well. They're much more accepting of other denominations and different things, which is really good to see. So yeah, it's really good history on the Reformation. I also had a bit of a read of The Stranger by Albert Camus. So I didn't like this book. Um, people really like this book. It's won lots of awards. It's been like, in classic kind of literature circles and different things it's been mentioned and that's kind of why I heard about it I heard about it on booktube and so I thought I'd give it a go but I did not like it um it was very I don't know how to put it into words so basically it talks about this guy who is he seems to have some kind of uh lack of social skills or still a fully functioning adult like he still has a job and house and all of that kind of thing he just doesn't he's just not a very emotionally um outwardly showing person and he doesn't necessarily get the same emotions from things that like most people do um and he basically it starts off with he, he finds out that his mother's died and he goes to the funeral and it's how he kind of deals with the funeral and then he comes home and he it basically is the tipping point for him to go okay like i i want to be with the woman that i want to be with i want to live the life that i want to live so i'm going to go do it and so which i think is like a fair enough way like some people cope that way some people don't necessarily like it hasn't sunk into them that this has happened or it causes them to have kind of like a wake up moment where they go oh my goodness I'm not living my best life I need to live a little because I'll be dead soon that kind of thing um and so he yeah he kind of has one of those moments and so he goes and chats up this girl that he liked at work who no longer works there and they like just get straight into it um which was a bit much to read so I didn't like it for that point because I don't like smutty books um but 
yeah, basically they immediately start dating, they immediately start doing things and um, he then also gets, uh, I don't know if involved is the right word, but like he, him and his neighbour kind of become best mates um, because his neighbour is going through this bad breakup and the neighbour is kind of abusive um but he's also been hurt by this girl that cheated on him and different things and he asks this main character to help him write a letter to this girl that he's basically breaking up with because she cheated on him and so he writes this letter on behalf of the neighbor and sign and like the neighbor signs it and sends it um as like a favor um and they become best mates and then this neighbor gets like attacked or whatever by this girl's family and all of this stuff and they're walking along this beach and they encounter these people again and like they get attacked and then they all go back to the house the main character walks back down to the beach to try and clear his head because of what's just happened but he's um got in his pocket the gun that the neighbor had because he kind of confiscated off the neighbor so the neighbor wouldn't do anything stupid but while he's on his clearing his head walk he encounters the guy that attacked the neighbor with a knife and all this stuff and he's still got knife and he goes to attack this main character and the main character shoots him and he dies and then the whole second half of the book is about this trial that this guy is going through and how they portray him as this guy who just doesn't care about anyone or anything. He didn't even care about his mum and his mum's funeral and all of this different stuff. And like big spoilers, but they end up killing him. Like they death sentence him and he dies. Like that's the whole book. And I just didn't like it. Um, I, yeah, I didn't like it. I know it's meant to be like a portrayal of like injustice and different things, or I hope that's what it's meant to be. Um, but it wasn't my thing. I didn't get any positive vibes out of it. I didn't really learn anything from it. And I just didn't, I, I didn't like it. It didn't sit well with me. So that was The Stranger. I'd probably give it a 2 out of 5. I didn't hate it, but I definitely didn't like it. Um, going to give this one away because I, yeah, it's not, it's not for me. And finally, as you guys have already seen on my channel, I read the Bitterbind Trilogy. I have done a whole review on this, so I'm not going to talk too long about it, but basically... I liked this story overall. The ending wasn't amazing. So it let down the series a little bit. There was a lot of description, which for the most part was good, but did get a little bit taxing as you get later in the series. So I did skip some little bits of just pure description. Um, but I loved the overall story. I loved the journey it took you on. I loved the love story that's intertwined in there. I thought it was a brilliant fantasy series. I gave it a four and a half out of five stars. Um, if you want to hear more of my thoughts, definitely check out my review because I definitely go in depth. I talk about some spoilers and different things like that that you guys might enjoy hearing about. I definitely recommend this one. If you love fantasy, it is so good. It does sort of give you the same in-depth level as like Lord of the Rings, so it's very high fantasy. Um, and there's like fairies and different things and immortals and all these creatures that are evil and trying to like basically take over the world and different things called whites and there's good whites and bad whites and there's all sorts of stuff going on. It was really, really good. Um, and I think the premise is really exciting. You basically follow, especially in this first book, this um, person who is mute and they are 
very disfigured across the face and down part of their body and they have lost all of their memories and so it's basically a book about them trying to reobtain their voice their memories and fix the disfigurement of their face um because it's mostly all there via magic um and yeah it's it was a really good series had a lot of twists and turns there is some bits where you just get so infuriated with the main character's decisions but I think that adds to it because it makes them seem very real um yeah I definitely enjoyed the series definitely check out my review and give these books a read because they are very good well that is the first half of the books that I read this month of January I hope you guys stay tuned on Friday for the next half because I read a lot of other books as well all very different genres and different things so yeah I hope you stick with me for that one and thank you so much for watching this video I hope you guys have a great week bye